You look at a kid from the south side of Chicago, from a mother who's 17 years old, I'm supposed to be a statistic, a bad statistic. I'm supposed to be on drugs. I'm supposed to be on, in jail. I'm supposed to have a lineage of children that I don't support, take care of, and some I may not even know. I defied those odds. I don't know where I would have been if um, my mother hadn't been willing to sacrifice and had the foresight and the understanding. But I do know where some of my friends are. I know where many of them are. And they're in the Illinois Department of Corrections, or they're in the cemetery, or some of them are on the street and uh, inebriated. And uh, it may sound like a cliche, but it's not. It's the truth. It was quite a journey to make the transition from public school to Providence St. Mel. And I know for a fact my life would have been totally different if I, my parents saved my life, actually, by um, requiring that I attend Providence St. Mel. My parents were both from Mississippi. Uh, they both came to Chicago in the 60s looking for work, basically, looking for opportunity. Um, and they found it. And, and kind of in that spirit, their dream was for the next generation to do better, so education was the key. She knew that the world in which she lived in, the world I live in now, uh, was growing up in, is very different. And education just became increasingly more important, especially for young African-American males. Uh, it's very difficult to get any place in life if you don't have a college degree, let alone a high school degree. My parents both graduated high school. Um, and that was as far as they went. My mom took a few college courses, but that was as far as they went. And they both wanted to make sure that we all went further than they did. I grew up poor. And uh, in hindsight, I say I was never poor, just broke. There's a difference. My mom attended some college. My dad finished high school. My mother was a single parent. Um, my father was in the picture, but you know we didn't live in the same household. So it was really my mom and my grandmother who, um, who raised me. My mother was very uh, strict about education. She really wanted to ensure that we got a good education. And it was everything in our household. You know, homework had to be done, grades had to be made, maintained, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I'm an anomaly because my mother got pregnant with me when she was 16 years old. So she was in high school herself when she was pregnant. Growing up in Chicago in the mid-90s, uh, you know, my, my mom was a single parent. It's a tough neighborhood um, that I grew up in right here on the west side of Chicago. Times were really tough. We, you know, four kids in the, in the household. Both of them had, you know, relatively low-paying jobs. And, you know, his thought was, well, the rest of the kids are in public school. <laughs> you know, we can't pay for an education. Where, where is this money going to come from? You know, he's the, you know, penny pincher. And my mom's like... Oh no, but she wants to go. You know, this is a kid who has always done well in school and she wants to go. If we say no to anything, it won't be to education. I'm so grateful that my mother realized that that was a turning point, that, that my education was so important. And quite literally, it, it meant her going without a winter coat. It meant her going without uh, stockings buying a new dress, um, it was a tangible, it was a very real sacrifice. So she brought home this brochure and she handed it to me and said, this is the school that you're going to be going to. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not, <laughs> to myself. <laughs> oh, no, I like where I'm going. And she said, you're going to take the entrance exam on this date and this is what's going to happen. And I looked at her and I said, but what about my friends? And she took the brochure away from me and she said, you'll find new ones. I remember being in eighth grade. Um, I went to a public elementary school. I really didn't know about Providence St. Mel. I just remember watching um, our local television station, ABC7 actually, um, and one of, our lead, one of the lead anchors there was doing a story about Providence St. Mel School. Something about it just touched me. I don't remember what it was, but I was mesmerized. And I told my mom after that, I want to go to Providence St. Mel. And she was kind of like, Providence who? You know, and I said, I want to go to Providence St. Mel. 
I heard about Providence St. Mel through a family member, a cousin actually, who was attending school here. Um, their parents obviously told my parents about it, and the next thing I heard was I was going there. I heard about Providence St. Mel from uh, my grandfather. Um, he evidently heard about a uh, high school that was, uh, or no-nonsense high school, uh, and he told my mom about it and uh, took the test. It wasn't that I thought what I was getting was bad. I just felt like I should get better. And there was something about Providence St. Mel that said to me, better. And I felt like I deserved better. It was that simple to me. So I walk into the principal's office and he says, nothing's wrong, John, sit down, I want to talk to you. He said, I'm looking at your test scores. And uh, he says, you really have something. And you have the ability to do something really special with your life. Where are you going to high school? I said, Farragut, I guess. And he said, you can't go there. I attended a public school, and my parents weren't very happy with it. I was really happy with it. <laughs> and um, they made the announcement to me one day, you're going to Providence St. Mel. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> and um, I soon found out. Being a Southside kid meant that I would have to take, you know, two buses and an L. And depending on the route I wanted to take, I might have to change and take two L's, change downtown. So it was an ordeal. It was no small feat to decide I'm not going to the neighborhood school. So for my mom and trying to convince her, it was that much more uh, of a, an, an, an impressive deal for me to say, I'm willing to do this. I know it means I've got to get up earlier every morning. I know it means that it'll be dark when I come home. I want to go. And so she couldn't refuse me. I was determined at that time that I was going to come to this school and I was going to flunk this entrance exam. I came to the school that Saturday, early Saturday cold morning, I think it was in October. And when I entered the building, it was just a sense of euphoria. It was just a different, for lack of a better word, spirit. Everything was organized. Everything was neat. Everything was just calm. And because of my ego and a little bit of arrogance, I determined I was not going to fail this test. There's no way I could fail this test. I was intimidated when I first came to Providence St. Mel. I had heard so many great things that even though I was a good student, I thought when I got here, you know, everybody else is going to be so much smarter than me. And, you know, how am I going to make it? I have to say, I academically wasn't prepared when I got here for the, um, the rigor of the Providence St. Mel experience. And so my first year was really, really tough. And the discipline was very, very tough for me. Um, so it was a big adjustment for me to make. Um, that first year, I did horribly. I didn't do as well in public school as I could have because I dumbed myself down. It was, it was not popular to be smart, and I wanted to fit in. And I knew if I was too smart or did the, all the correct things, then I knew I would be, be ridiculed or I wouldn't be the popular one. And that's something that I wanted to do. Once I became the problem in St. Mel, it was totally different. You have to be smart. You have to want to excel, because if not, you'll be left in the dust. So I get in there. I'm, I'm behind the, the curveball here. I got a D. It was the first D of my life. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. D for die, right here on the spot. But actually, I was grateful for it because I actually thought I was going to get an F. Coming into Providence St. Mel, and from the time you're in first grade, you're told you're going to college one day. And you don't, what is college when you're in first grade? But you continue to hear that, and then you get to see all of these older kids around you being successful and, you know, earning scholarships, and you see their pictures on the wall. Then it be begins to make sense to you that, okay, this is important. We learned how to study freshman year. Uh, it was a class. <laughs> you got an A or B in studying. <laughs> if you got a C or D in, in freshman study skills, you're not going to last long. When I got here, you know, the teachers knew who I was. They knew the areas where I wasn't doing well, and they really, really pushed me and required that I give it my absolute best. If Michael Jordan had gone to St. Mel, honest to God, if he had gone to St. Mel and didn't do his work in the classroom, he'd never played. That's the truth. The premise of the school is for you to get an education. If you walked on the grass, there was like a $10 fine. And 
I, I, I got a couple of those. And if you chewed gum, there were gum fines and there were just fines for everything. And so, you know, that's a huge motivator when your mom is telling you that, well, I guess you're not going to, you know, get those shoes because you've got a gum fine to pay. You grow up in an environment where being a nerd is, you know, something that's frowned upon, where it's not cool to be smart, you know? It's, it's not cool to be the one who's sitting in the front of the class raising your hand. You want to be the one in the back passing notes and cracking jokes and that kind of thing. Those are the kids who are celebrated and who, um, you know, who get the, the, the popularity points, if you, if you will. But here, it's, uh, it's an environment and an atmosphere where the competition is about being smart. It's about who's making the honor roll. There was this assembly at the end of each semester, and they called your name, and people cheered when you walked across the stage. The discipline is probably the, the single most important thing that I learned here. Um, and all of the values that are embedded into the Providence St. Mel mission statement. I remember saying that mission statement every day, and you just sort of say it without really thinking about it. At Providence St. Mel, we believe. So you have to start there with belief. We believe in the creation of inspired lives produced by the miracle of hard work. We are not frightened by the challenges of reality, but believe we can change our conception of this world and our place within it. So we work, we plan, we build, and we dream in that order. We believe that one must run the right to dream. Our talents, discipline, and integrity will be our contribution to the new world because we believe that we can take this place, this time, and this people and make a better place, a better time, and a better people. That's my favorite part. With God's help, we either find a way or make one. We said that every day. I said that every day for three years. You can't say, and I call it a mantra, you can't say that mantra and not have those words infuse you and inspire you to want to do your best and be the best. Back then, quite honestly, it just felt like a chore. It's like, okay, God had say the mission statement. I had no idea how deeply ingrained that mission statement would become to me. I have it framed in my home right now. It says, you know, we work, plan, build, and dream in that order. And that's what we're encouraged to do here, and I think that's what kids need to understand, that if you work and you plan and you can build, then you can have your dreams come true. Hard work is not something that just comes naturally to a lot of people. But here, we know that with hard work, we can create our own miracles. And it's wonderful to have that mission statement. But, but what's more important is that students and the teachers and the administration lives by it. And the interesting thing now is, you know, all of these years later, the same anchor who I remember, the same television news anchor who I remember doing that story on um, Providence St. Mel back in the early 80s, she's now my coworker as I'm a producer at ABC7 in Chicago. When people ask how did I wind up in Atlanta, Georgia, I say, well, I went to Ohio to work for the president, and five states later I wound up in Atlanta, Georgia, and have been there uh, ever since, and now I work as the state director for the Democratic National Committee in Georgia. Currently, I'm a professor at Roosevelt University, and uh, I'm a tenured full professor. I came in that way, been there for four years. I absolutely fell in love with working with young children and decided to go back to graduate school at Howard University to earn my master's degree in early childhood and did lots of things even after that, but just really always knew that I wanted to continue to work with young children. and. I decided to open a school. I earned my um, bachelor's degree in psychology and communication at Stanford University, and I earned my master's degree in journalism from Northwestern, Medill School of Journalism. I was a um, reporter at the Washington Post, uh, a national correspondent at the New York Times, a staff writer, reporter at the Chicago Tribune. I worked for the Wall Street Journal and the Chicago Sun-Times. My parents led me to Providence St. Mel. Providence St. Mel provided the foundation for an education. The education provided me an opportunity to go to college. College opened up the door for me to become commissioned. Being commissioned opened up the door for me to celebrate, handshake, and have two presidents of the United States know me by my first name. I was on the Capitol steps of the U.S. Capitol, standing directly behind the President of the United States, President Barack Obama. 
I was the officer in charge of that entire platform with all of the Supreme Court justices, former presidents of the United States, celebrities, you name it. The most important thing I learned from Providence St. Mel was that uh, you can't really accomplish anything in life without hard work. As someone told me once, and I'll never forget it, the only time success comes before work is in a dictionary. The power of education gives us the ability um, to compete, and it becomes this great equalizer. And it is, it is, how do you measure that? You know, this calls itself a college preparatory school. It's really a real life preparatory school. There are some things at Providence St. Mill that are measurable. And among them is the impact on people's lives. Um, that it changes generations.